Welcome back to the channel. Now recently I showed a dual ringer type circuit, 1.5 volt powered, and was wondering about expanding it and seeing which directions I could go with this particular setup. I've got several of these other coils that are receiving energy um, from this main one here. But then I saw a comment that I got on the first video. And I thought, yeah, what might happen if I stack them up much more like a Slayer Exciter, kind of normal Tesla tower? Do we get any improvement, changes? I would like to find out. So here we are with it modified. I've got the original coil at the bottom, and that's got the few turns at the base of it that normally shows the LED on. Then I've got a few windings between and up to another one of these that are fully wrapped now as a one layer. Also, you can see halfway up it, two thirds up it, there's a single wire and I'll show more of that in a minute. But first of all, we'll power up and we'll see what it does in comparison to a regular kind of dual ringer. First thing to notice, well there's no light on at the bottom. If we get one of the usual tester type of tubes with the ferrite in, inside it and we'll try that first of all and if I bring it up to the side you may be able to see yes the light is on so it does that okay now if I get this tiny little coil here which have wound with 300 turns of 40 gauge you can see that blue light is on at the top and I've got another one here um, Again, wrapped around but with 30 gauge, and there we are, that light is on. So, yeah, okay, you know, normal kind of things. However, what I have noticed is that this one does not work at the bottom at all. It will only start to work further up. Now, we'll move on to this single wire. What I've got here is a PC heat sink that's being used as a ground. I've then got an AV plug plugged in with a blue LED and I've got a wire coming off it to a piece of foil and this was something I was working on for the long range distance thing down the back of the house of uh, 600 feet or whatever it was because you can actually if I get this and I get the wire and I just put that around the wire press it on then you can see the LED is on and the thing is that however long the wire is you can just put the piece of foil around and you'll get your LED to light up so you can have loads of them as trail lights or something which I just thought was a really cool little thing but this little system does work like that also a regular AV plug held in the hand will do some of the usual tricks like I just can just touch the negative of the battery and there we are the light comes on there further up and there we are get it from that little point there for the single wire also on connections to the transistor so at this point now we've seen it stacked as it was I bet everyone's wondering what it's like as an actual Slayer Exciter so here's the circuit and big differences are I've kept the same components I was using before the 5.1k resistor to the base I've only running on 1.5 volts I don't have the LED that you can see at the bottom middle so really it's the same circuit but with three turns as the primary coil so we'll go back to the table now and try it out here we are back at the table and I've kept the lights off just so you can see the uh, well if any lights do come on on this system I haven't tried it if only to try it on the table in the other room and I did get one light to come on so I'm presuming quite a lot here but there you can see the three turns it's a lot more conventional to a Slayer Exciter but I've only got about 160 to 200 turns so that's not a great deal and we're only running from 1.5 volts with a slightly changed circuit from the one you saw on the Instructables. That's why I don't know what's going to happen. But we don't have the light at the bottom still, so that's one thing. Do we have anything? Well, let's 
try at the side. Oh, hang on a minute. Yes, we do get the blue light. But interestingly, best when it's at the top, which makes me wonder, can I just... I can. I can just stick that on the top and the light's on. And quite brightly as well. So we do have a higher little system there now. Okay. Right, so the next thing might be we'll try the AV plug. We'll try on the end. Yes, we do. On the end of the battery. Nice bright glow. Uh, maybe on parts, yep, parts of the transistor. And further up, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we're working fine there. It is quite nice and bright. Off the very end, yep. Yep, because that's this end here used to connect down to the bottom. So all that's pretty good. Uh, how about this little one that we were showing before? We've got nothing yet. Oh, is it going to do anything? So maybe it's been knocked out of some kind of range of working. So that's interesting, that no longer works. Here's just a little insert because I did find that this works. This is after I've finished recording and I was doing the editing and I thought, wait a minute, but there it goes there. Just a very small section for some reason. Just that little section there works with this particular coil. Which now makes me wonder about this over here on the single wire. So if I grab, grab that Try and do this as I'm finding out myself. Put that round. Oh, yes we do. We <laughs> so the single wire still works. Yeah, so different running characteristics, but quite sort of broadly the same. All I'm using is the outside layer of this one, now at the bottom, rather than the double layers. And then, of course, it's connected up to the top there. But I think one major change was that. And indeed, I can run that light and the single wire with no issues. Well, that did prove to be quite interesting. Um, I especially like the way that this changed its operating to up near the top. And, oh, it does work down to the middle as well, I've just found out. So, it does run, yeah, a bit of a gap there, slightly differently than when it was a dual ringer. So there's a couple of things being found out there, and I do like the way that the single wire works. Okay, thanks very much for watching.